In the introit of today's Mass, we pray, O God, come to my assistance. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let them be confounded and turned back who seek my soul. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I apologize, first of all, to those of you that might have already heard this sermon. I gave it at St. Gertrude's last week. But it's such an important topic, I think, particularly for the younger generations to hear. It's on social media. Social media, when you think about it, it really is an amazing thing. How far it's come. I remember those gigantic computers that would take up your whole desk space, and then you'd have the part that you have to keep down here that keeps everything running. I remember the phone walls inconveniently getting wrapped around the the table legs on your kitchen table. And in seminary, I was still using a word processor to write out different reports. Since then, it has come a, a long way to the point now where we have cell phones that, sure, they cost as much as a computer. They do all the same things as a computer, but you can carry them in your pocket. So far have we come from those old hunker computers. And then the social platform. Did you know that there are up to 212 platforms for social media. And by that I mean such platforms as Skype, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and all of that long list. Instagram, all of them. 212 means of social communication. Now Steven Spielberg, he says that technology can be our best friend. And technology can be the biggest party pooper of our lives because it interrupts our own story. It interrupts our own ability to have a thought or a daydream, to imagine something wonderful because we're too busy bridging the walk from cafeteria to office, cell phone in hand. And then Jason Silva, he says, technology is a double-edged sword. Just as fire can cook our food, it can also burn us. So also with social media. It can quite often burn us. But social media, it has so many good points to it, yet so many bad. I'm thinking for the good points, it all started with Bishop Fulton Sheen using the radio and television to preach the Catholic faith, to raise money for foreign missions. I'm thinking of Pope Pius XII, who would be as well on television. And then I think of present-day good that's done, the online Mass, so that sick people or those who otherwise can't attend a Mass can at least watch their Sunday Mass online thinking of all the the articles that have been printed, explaining our faith, going into detail, explaining all of the the arguments that take place in the situation of the church today. You can read the lives of the saints, and you can even watch Catholic movies online. All of this good can be done, but then there is, along with the good, a whole lot of evil. On the natural level, it causes a lack of attention. It, it always pulls us away from the important things of, of life. It pulls us away from our duties of state and life and our spiritual life as well. You've probably noticed how my generation and those younger, well, we just don't seem to have as much physical energy to do the things that you older generations did. How when you were here trying to keep the faith going, you were raising a family of eight, perhaps, and working 
your, your downtime was spent here in church building altars and pews and choir lofts and then transporting the priests everywhere. And, well, we can hardly do the little things, our generation, because there is a constant fatigue. And believe it or not, most of it is caused because of too much social media. It is an overwhelming thing. Then, of course, it does in our day and age give an occasion to anxiety. This is another big issue with the younger generations. And it's caused not only from all the negative news that's 24 hours a day, seven days a week shown to us. It's not all just because of the constant contact with a computer, but they say that, they explain it this way, that all of these social platforms, Facebook or what have you, they move along so quickly, and you're meant to just keep scrolling down the list and look at pictures and maybe click on this article and give it a quick overview and then go on to something else. It's so fast that it's caused the average person's attention span to go down to eight seconds And that in turn, they say, they explain it, that it causes heart palpitations. All this quickness and fast. And well, once the heart palpitations start, some people then are prone to great physical uh, symptoms of anxiety and panic attacks and the rest. And then, of course, social media occasions rough sleep. And let's never forget the worst danger of all, all of the occasions of sin, and you know them, that result from the social media. Communication. It's a very big part of our life. We, that is most of us here, we hold our phones always in readiness. They're on our person. And we are in readiness for that next call, that next vibration, that next specialized ringtone. And immediately upon its ringing, we answer. No matter the interruptions, no matter who it pulls us away from, or the strains that it causes to the mind, or the extra work and fatigue, the the loss of sleep, No matter, we pick it up. We are always on call. But if you are one of these people who does this, then you already have got all of the makings of becoming a great saint. If, instead of being so ready to answer that next call from social media, you hold yourself in constant readiness to answer that next call from Almighty God. That is, to pay attention to those actual graces, His phone call, that are being given to you at every single moment. These graces... They come to the mind. They're suggested by God to the mind some good thought or a pious thought. It enlightens the mind. It inflames the will. And God will make known what he wants you to do at this very moment. This is God's way of speaking to you. His own personal phone call. Now the saints, they were just as ready, more even, to answer God's call to action than the most tech-savvy social butterfly is to answer his cell phone. And the joy that these saints experienced was much greater than any joy which social media might give. For answering the call of social media in excess brings about eventually anxiety and distraction. 
But answering God's call, corresponding with His graces, brings about great peace. So the saints, they always held themselves in readiness. That is, in a habitual attitude of waiting for the next actual grace. You might say that they always had their spiritual and heavenly cell phone right on the table ready to pick it up at the first ring tone. And the saints, like so many in today's age, will push aside all of their other company and everything else that interferes with this call. The saints, though, do it for a higher motive. I think of St. Clair, who, when God called her, to enter the religious order, her parents forbade it. They even came into the convent to pull her by force away. Nevertheless, she answered the call of God. I think of the Old Testament prophet Samuel. Do you know this story? He's sleeping one night. He lives in the same house with his, you might say, his superior. It's dark, pitch black. They're both asleep. And Samuel is wakened by someone saying his name, Samuel, Samuel. He wakes up and he looks around. No one's there, he says. So he runs over to the bedroom of his superior and he says, I'm here, you called me. The superior said, well, no, I didn't call you. Just go back to bed, it's okay. So he did and went back to sleep. Samuel, Samuel. Again the call came. Samuel got up and he immediately went back to his superior's room. Did you call me? Well, he said, no, I didn't call you. He thought about it for a moment. But it could be God. So what you do is the next time you hear this call of your name is you say to our Lord, I am here and I am ready. What do you want from me? So he went back to sleep. A little bit later, Samuel, Samuel. And he did just as his superior had done, and God had spoken to him. See how quick he was to respond to God's call. Or I think of of the missionary, Peter de Smet, who, though his family didn't believe he had a vocation to the missions. Nonetheless, he left without even telling them. Why? Because the call of God is much greater than the call of the family. The saints were always prompt to answer the call of God. But graces, like phone calls, they can come at any time. You don't want to miss them. But if you miss a phone call, chances are they'll call back, particularly the telemarketers, two, three, four times a day, and they get worse now that they have your cell phone numbers. But the thing is, they will most of the time call you back. But should we screen God's calls, delay in responding to His graces, there might not be a callback. You might not get the second chance. You see, the way it works is this, that each grace, each actual grace, leads to another, and then to another and another. It is, as it were, a a chain. Each actual grace is a link in this chain. If you correspond with the first, you get a second you correspond with that, you get a third. And this whole long chain is built up so that the chain is meant to reach from heaven to earth. And you are meant to climb this chain of actual graces to eternal bliss in heaven. Fail to correspond with even one grace and it could destroy the chain. And you could fall back down to the ground never to rise up again. And then 
But I speak to you sincerely now. You and I have been given many, many graces. We have been given first and foremost the faith, a grace which very few people in these days have has been given. The faith established by God himself with pristine doctrine and the church which has the only way to salvation. We have the Holy Mass where the work of our Lord's redemption is redone right here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We have the sacraments, particularly Holy Eucharist, in which in a few moments from now, you will be in direct contact with Almighty God Himself through Holy Communion. And these graces will support you through whatever you have to deal with today. But, as long as we're so wrapped up in social media, we will never hear the call of God, the call of God to Mass. You see, I've been thinking about this point for, for quite a long time now. Why is it? I'm pretty proud of you overall, by the way, for your attendance at Mass, because I figured that we're a much smaller congregation than St. Gertrude's, but percentage-wise, you actually, there are more people here than there. They have 350 people to our 80 or 90. Percentage-wise, more of our people come. I'm quite proud of you for that. But then we all have to face it, the facts, because we all do this from time to time, I've heard this excuse many times why someone cannot make an extra Mass. They say, well, they're just too busy. And I grant you that life is busy, but then so much of it, especially for the younger folk, is unnecessary business, busyness on social media. They say that the average Facebook user is on that platform for 20 minutes a day. The average person is on the internet using social media two hours and 22 minutes a day. But, so this is what oftentimes keeps them so busy and so fatigued that they can't make that extra 20-minute or 30-minute trip to come to at least one extra Mass in the week. They answer the call to social media rather than God's call. But our duty is to dispose ourselves to all of these graces. How do you do this? Put aside from time to time the social media Find yourself a quiet spot, like St. Giles, who fled the cities, went out into the wilderness where he could be in solitude to focus on Almighty God, and do some spiritual reading. Now, I end on a couple more points. Bear with me. Why is it so important that we dispose ourselves to God's graces? It is because your response or your failure to respond to these graces could mean your or someone else's salvation or damnation. One of the most interesting stories that I tell people happened to me not long ago. So you know that I take care of the sick people and all of the missions and chapels. And on this one particular occasion, there was a, a young lady, a nurse, and these days, nurses aren't taught to look more towards the soul. Just take care of the body and make the, the patients comfortable. But this nurse, who is not a very, not a practicing Catholic, 
she noticed that the, the dying lady whom she was caring for was wearing a miraculous medal around her neck. Now she said normally she wouldn't pay attention to this, nor would she have thought to call a priest. But she said on this one occasion, something hit her. Maybe I should do something about this one. So she, she called me and told me about the situation. And I was able to go out and anoint the dying woman who died later that night. Now, had this non-practicing Catholic ignored the grace, that sign of the miraculous medal, that lady would not have been anointed and perhaps would not have saved her soul. This is how important it is to correspond with the graces of God. But if we're on social media, all this noise going around us 24-7, we won't hear the phone call of God. I end with three practical points, very brief. Because I will not tell you that I forbid social media. That's not a practical piece of advice. But if you're going to use it, before going on, first, have a goal. What do I hope to achieve by going on this social media? Two, set yourself a time limit to accomplish this goal in. And at the end, that's it. And then thirdly, use the time that you have saved from social media to come to Mass, to do some spiritual reading, all of those things that dispose you to hear the call of Almighty God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.